On September 6, 2022, 22-year-old property manager Jelana Dunlap Banks visited a property in Fayetteville, North Carolina, at her boss's request to inspect and photograph illegally dumped trash. Officer Ryan Haddock of the Phil Police Department approached her while she was in her vehicle, later joined by Detective Amanda Bell. Despite claiming to be searching for a violent suspect nearby, a lawyer for Miss Dunlap revealed police radio traffic indicating otherwise. The encounter, captured on body camera, involved Officer Haddock questioning Miss Dunlap. How you doing? I just saw you pull back over here. Any reason why you're back over here? Uh, you got any ID or anything on you? Well, I mean, it's all fine and dandy what you're telling me, but, I mean, you know, it just kind of looks suspicious that you pulled out here in the middle of the field. Huh? Technically, you could be trespassing. Hey, of email. Well, I don't know that. Yeah, How do I know that? Officer Haddock claimed that Miss Dunlap could be trespassing, according to a lawsuit she filed regarding this interaction. She requested to leave, but was told she couldn't. To lawfully seize her, officers would need reasonable suspicion of criminal activity, which wasn't evident. Even if Miss Dunlap had trespassed, it's unclear under North Carolina law. The statutes require clear intent or notification to trespass. The officers lacked reasonable suspicion solely based on her presence, as courts don't consider mere presence on private property enough for detention. In summary, Officer Haddock's claim of trespassing was legally questionable, lacking the required suspicion for detention under the Fourth Amendment standards. Go ahead, just step out of the car. Just step out of the vehicle. Step out. Ma'am, all I've asked you for is your ID so we can make sure that you're not trespassing. Ma'am, step out of the car. Okay, don't drag me. Out. Then get out of the car. I will if you will release my arm. Get out of the car. If you will release my arm. Ryan, you good over there? Yeah, she's refusing to come out of the car. Because you're grabbing my arm very okay. tightly. Okay, you ready? Okay, now you're hang on. You're grabbing my arm very tightly. Let her, let her go. She ain't going nowhere now. Look. Let me go. Okay. And now. I'll get the out. Okay, step back and Don't let her go. Don't start. Right okay. There. Okay, it now sure is. Of, okay, now And you're not getting it because I know I haven't did it. Okay, let's step out of the car. Okay. How many times have I asked you not? Please, let go of me. Stop. What are you doing? Let go of me because I haven't said anything. She's hiding me. No, she's yes, not. She is. After Miss Dunlap began recording the officers on her cell phone, Detective Bell approached the driver's side door and attempted to physically pull her out of the car without warning. Officer Haddock joined in, and despite Miss Dunlap offering to step out if they released her arm, the officers continued pulling on her until they managed to remove her. Once out of the vehicle, they pushed her against it and forcibly handcuffed her. Courts acknowledge that officers can use reasonable force to remove a driver who refuses a lawful order to exit their vehicle. However, absent probable cause for arrest or clear safety threats, using force may be considered excessive. In this case, Miss Dunlap was suspected of a minor, non-violent offense with no evidence of immediate threat or resistance. She also expressed willingness to comply if they let go of her arm. Considering the factors outlined by the Supreme Court in Graham v. Connor, where the severity of the crime, immediate threat, and resistance are key, a court might conclude that the officers used excessive force in this situation. Sit down. We are investigating. Why am I being charged with? We are investigating you trespassing on this property. But I'm not. Okay. <laughs> And you have resisted, delayed, and obstructed our investigation, okay? And resisted while we were trying to get you out of the car, okay? Okay, look at me for a second. All right, listen, look at me for a second. Right now, you're not, you're not in any trouble. So why am I in Okay, because right now, listen, I'm just looking. Why am I in handcuffs if I'm not in trouble? Right now, you're just being... I know my right. All right, listen. I know I ain't did wrong. All right, right now, you're just being detained. Didn't we saying you're under arrest? We were over here in this area looking for somebody. All right. No, it ain't me. No, it ain't you. All okay, right. so what do I do? Wait a second. Let me finish. All right. He came over here to talk to you to find out if you knew anything about what was going and on. I just said I did it. Right. Okay. And that's fine. We're going to do our thing, and then we're probably going to cut you loose, okay? All right. Let's see. Ripping my panty pack off and trying to throw me out the car and like that. Yeah. Huh? Best I just told her to back up. Okay. 
Yeah. 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 Make sure she's clear. It's, she is. She is. She is. She is. All right. Go ahead and stand up. We're going to get you out of handcuffs. Okay. But all that shit over there was unnecessary. Okay. I was talking to you, and I, okay. I want to get out of the car. You I, come and did I, not, did, I not, car. did I not let you get out of the car on your phone? No, no, hang on. But, but. So, you understand why we were out here just asking these questions, yes? I hear you. Okay. We're trying to give you a hard time, okay? It's no, that was. And I want her name. She needs a ticket for you. I want that bitch name. See what I mean. All right. I'm so sure this needs a ticket for you. We can see what I mean. Yeah. Well, go ahead and. Okay. Is she gonna write it? Are you gonna write it? Uh, I don't have anything to write it with. If she's got her computer, yeah, go ahead and see. It. Put me as a witness. Okay, that's fine. Hold on, close. Officer Haddock suggested writing Miss Dunlap a ticket for RDO, short for resisting, delaying, or obstructing an officer, and CYA, short for cover your ass. However, since the officers lacked reasonable suspicion for the stop, they may not have been discharging an official duty as required by the law. North Carolina also recognizes citizens' rights to defend themselves against illegal arrests and excessive force. Therefore, it's unlikely that a court would find Miss Dunlap guilty of resisting, delaying, or obstructing officers in this situation. Your ticket for RDO to see why. Uh -huh. You want to go for it? Anybody? I don't care who writes it, but the CYA, both of us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. Please. All right, you go ahead. You put me down as a witness or whatever you need to do. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, Andrew said, just do a warning. Like, at least some piece of paper. Clarity, she said she didn't need. I saw you throw up. Are you sure you're okay? Was it just stress that caused that? <sighs> so, all that was unnecessary. Well, here's the deal. This is her name and badge number, okay? Great. Okay, this is my name, my badge number, and my telephone number, okay? Great. She works directly for me. Are you wanting to file a formal yep. complaint against her right now? Because yep. I want to tell you what the process is for this. If you want to bear with me, just I'm going to kneel down with you right here, okay? So come down, write a formal statement for me. So text me, let me know when you're coming down, all right? Is this what you're saying right here? That right there and that right there. Okay, I'll snap a photo of that real quick, okay? Uh, what all what all did y'all explain to her? What all did y'all say? Well first I explained to no, her. Not, she's, oh, she's, yeah. she's perfectly fine. However, she does want to make she's she's upset. She's not upset at the situation, she's more upset, unfortunately, at Bell than anybody else. And how how she was removed from the vehicle. Oh, you had your camera on there, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. I've talked to her. I gave her my information. Your information told her to come see me. So tomorrow and we'll, we'll write it all down. She's fine now. She's calm. She just wants to go. So I've got her keys. I'm gonna give her her keys and let her go. Okay, Jelana, let me see your hand real quick. Not with the phone in it. <laughs> Sorry. Lay it out for me. No, no, don't fist it like you won't find me. Come on. All right, hold on. Got a little bit of a shadow. Don't move. We're saying these two right here. Okay. Okay, let me take a look at you real quick. Can you stand up for me real quick? I'm just going to get a, a full frontal shot, all right? Here are your car keys. Do you need anything else from me, ma'am? I know it's, uh, it's, it's a little stressful, but you... On October 25th, 2022, Miss Dunlap obtained a court order for the release of body camera footage and filed a federal lawsuit alleging unreasonable seizure, excessive force, and First Amendment retaliation. The lawsuit is pending. Due to this incident, she resigned from her position as a property manager, fearing similar occurrences. An internal complaint with the Fayetteville Police Department was filed on September 8, 2022, but there's been no public update on the investigation's outcome. On May 27, 2020, a man named Amori Johnson was accused by police officers of smoking in a smoke-free area while waiting outside a grocery store for his friends shopping. But at the time of the incident, Mr. Johnson did not have any cigarettes in his hand or pocket. The encounter was caught on body camera by Officer Matt Dagas of the La Mesa Police Department. Get the off me, bro. Cause you got me for it, bro. I already told you this is coming straight. You look goofy as hell, bro. Stop touching me, bro. Obviously, yeah, nobody's going nowhere. Smack hey, hey, hey. what I tell you? Sit I told down. you I was waiting for somebody to come here. Okay. They right here, bro. Sit down. Oh, oh, my God. You're tough as up. Hey, you tough as up. Stop. 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 Stop.
Stop. Hey, we don't Stop. Bro, bro, you goofy as hell, bro. Hey, Mr. Dadges, you making a big ass deal out of nothing, bro. You're the one that's You making a big ass deal out of nothing, bro. You making a big ass deal out of nothing. You real big, though, huh? Dude, hey, you real big. You're the one that just hey, you real big. Sit down. Hey, you real tough. Okay. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, where was I? Where was I at? Where was I at? Right there. I told you, bro. The ride that came, bro. That's fine. The people came. I'm finna dip. Okay. Y'all know what's going on? I just got here, man. This fool is in the fucking wrong. He tried to come up on him like he's not doing. Shit. He's waiting for me to get back from the store, right? When I come back, instead of him just apologizing, being like, "Oh, you're right. I get it." Yeah. He tries to grab him and choke him and put him on the thing obviously the, my friend is gonna put his hands back like no one's gonna get choked and shit bro this fool's in the wrong and he could just say that and let it go and instead he's trying to i don't know what the fuck he's well, trying just to trying to figure out what's going on man bro he's being a whole ass bro oh god and you know you're okay i have no reason to be detained by you bro sit down bro stop sit down bro you see your bro sit down dude for real y'all are funny as hell bro Funny as hell, bro. Hey, 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 Bro, y'all okay. hella goofy, bro. I'm talking to you, and you smack me. Bro, nobody smacked you, bro. Why I smack you? You didn't? Why I smack you? You didn't? Why you didn't, smack you? You didn't hit my arm? Why I smack you? Oh, All right, but why are you grabbing me, though? Why are you grabbing because me? Because you keep trying to stand up. Because you keep trying to stand up. Bro, shut the fuck up. Quit talking to me, bro. I ain't got nothing to say to you, bro. All right. Straight up. Goofy as hell, bro. Hey, no, chill out. I'm good, bro. I already know I'm good. Hey, you trying to shoot me and do some weird shit here right now, bro? So you feel me? Shit finna be straight. Bro, dumb as f Bro, you see what's going on though, right? Bro, for real. I'm waiting out here for my friends. I told you that. That's hey, right. Hey, did you look my name up already, bro? Did you look? Hey, what 24 stand for, too? Hey, what that stand for? Is that a gang? Is that a gang thing? Hey, you got 24 on your too? We're going to talk to you. All right, talk to me then. Give me all these cuffs. Talking about I'm detained. Bro, ain't no deep breath. Ain't no calming down, bro. Y'all got six cops for no reason over here, bro. Y'all goofy as hell. Bro, over here talking about, hey, are you smoking weed and shit? Oh, suck my shit. Suck my shit. You bitch ass boy. You a hoe. I'm an attorney. Bro. Bro, fuck him, bro. Yeah, what? Pussy. Hey, one by one. One by one. All these niggas, I'll beat your ass. Don't say that. Bro. All that extra bro. No one's doing anything extra. If anyone's being extra, it's you. Okay. And your friends. All right, bro. Extra is me being in this position right now. You know what I'm saying? Because you saw me just standing there. And you know why I put your hand off of me. Because you grabbed me. So, you know what I'm saying? It's all good. And I didn't try to run or nothing, but, you know, if y'all if y'all want to take to the step, it's cool. I understand. I don't, Copy, but, you know what I'm for a 241C. This is funny as fuck, bro. Funny as hell, bro. Take a step back for me. Do you have anything on you that's going to poke me, stick me, stab me? No, nope, nothing. You can, can lift we, up your hands. Come, bro, my cut. Uh, how? How, man? Like, come on now. How? Well, See how your arms go up. See how your arms go up and down. Yeah, you just like that. They don't go, go up much, bro. They don't go up much. No, they go you know up. What I'm saying, just check my pants. Do your job. <laughs> my nerves, bro. Shut up. If you would have acted like a normal person, bro, then you I would have acted normal as fuck. Did I lie answer. to you the whole time? Did so I tell you my friend was coming? Then he was. So what are we doing here? What are we doing? And you put your hands on me. I did. When did I put your hands on you, bro? You put your hands on me. When would I put my hands on you? I tried to get you off of me because you were grabbing me. And it's on film, so, you know, it's whatever, though. All right, come on. You my stuff? Just take a seat in the car real quick. Man, why are we doing all this, man? Can you just unlock it for me? I know. Go take a seat. I'm at least get my stuff off the front of the car, like. <sighs> Slide in. In his police report, Officer Degas made some very inaccurate statements and said that Mr. Johnson had been smoking and had even fought with him. These claims were later found to be false. Mr. Johnson sued for violation of his personal rights after the incident. La Mesa agreed to pay $125,000 to settle a lawsuit over the May 2020 arrest of Amori Johnson, conducted by Officer Matthew Degas. 
The settlement followed a video showing Dages grabbing and pushing Johnson, leading to allegations of excessive force and wrongful arrest. Dages was fired and later acquitted of lying on a police report. On January 26, 2020, Melissa Hughes was driving home after picking up her son and his friends from a pizza place. Just a few minutes away from home, several patrol vehicles from the Grand Rapids Police Department suddenly pulled her over, and numerous officers immediately approached her with their hands resting on their holstered firearms. Miss Hughes was wearing a Black Lives Matter sweatshirt with her cousin's name on the back. Her cousin, Darius Wimberly, was previously shot and killed by a Benton Harbor police officer in 2016. Hello, my name is Officer Vandenberg, Grand Rapids Police Department. Uh -huh. Reason for the stop today? Well, I'm sorry, can you roll your back windows down? Roll my back windows down. Yeah, just so we can see. Um, Reason for the stop today is your license plate's expired. Yeah, Do you have I'm your driver's on Okay. Do you have a driver's license, proof of insurance? Why are you flashing your ID? Is it not awesome? Yeah. Minors. All three of them are minors. All three of them are minors. They're all minors, all in my care. Okay. Do you have your proof of insurance? No. No? No, because I'm, I'm going to do it all Monday. Okay. Where you are you? My registration? If you have it, yes. Give me my registration. Where are you guys coming from today? I was picking them up from Pete's from Little Caesars and going right here to my house, which is right there. Okay. They're all minors. So, y'all don't, don't got to answer any of your questions. Correct? Correct? We're just asking for their information, ma'am. They're all minors. No, I don't have to give them y'all information. Y'all are minors. All y'all minors. Okay. Did you get his? No, that's my son. No. Okay. And, these, and, and, and they both in my care. So. These are my two friends that just came over. Okay. We're, we're just trying to figure out who everybody is. Okay. This is my son and his two friends. That's okay. it. All right. You can go run my stuff. All right. I'll be back up with you in a minute. Yeah, okay. The officers pulled Melissa Hughes over because of the vehicle's expired license plate tag, as seen in the footage. They needed probable cause, a valid reason to suspect a crime, to stop her, search the vehicle, or make an arrest. Although the stop was valid, the officer seemed interested in more than the expired tag, particularly in identifying the minors in the car, which they were not required to do under Michigan's passenger rights. Michigan's laws allow officers to request identification or conduct a search, but individuals can refuse unless there's probable cause or reasonable suspicion of criminal activity. The Michigan Supreme Court has found some passenger searches unconstitutional. In essence, Officers must have a valid reason to suspect passengers are involved in a crime, which was lacking in this case. The minors were within their rights not to share personal information, protected by the Fourth Amendment against unreasonable searches and seizures. She's expired. 1213, oh, At this point, the officer checked Melissa Hughes's details and found that her driver's license had also expired. Meanwhile, another officer continued to watch as Melissa remained in the vehicle with the three children. Ma'am, could you roll your back windows down again? For what? Just to make sure I can see back there. Nobody got no weapons or nothing. Okay. So why do I gotta keep rolling my windows down? Like I said, so I can see back there. What I'm gonna have you do is step out of the car right now. Why? Your driver's license is expired. My driver's license expired. Yes, it is. I have till ten days after. Ma'am, step pay out of the car. Feet. For put, what? Put your phone down. Step out of the car. Hold it. For, step for out what? of the car. Why? Face forward. 
For what? Put your hands on your head. I told you, your license is required. So I'm gonna get arrested? Put your hands on your head. I was okay. my birthday. Put your, hand Put your hands on your head. They're right there. Okay, walk back with me. <laughs> For real? Really? We'll go on this side. Go where? Right over here. Try and find a spot where there's not as much snow. That'll, that'll be good for now. Hold on, my, my purse okay. is unzipped. Okay, we'll get it off here. Okay, keep your left hand on your head. Uh -huh. I have a so. Okay. As long as you're calm, I'll be calm, okay? I don't have a problem. Keep, keep your left hand on your head. Uh-huh. I don't understand why I'm being put in cuffs. Well, I told you, your driver's license is expired. I was taking care of it all on Monday. I thought I had 10 days to the 31st. No. I, I thought I did. Okay. Can you bring your left hand down for me? No, uh -huh. my aunt just died yesterday, so I was out of town all day. Okay. I was at the yeah. hospital all day today with my fiance. I'm sorry to hear that. Yep. I've never been put in cuffs a day in my life. All right, I'm going to double lock these so they don't tighten up on you, okay? Okay. All of this for expired for my life to be expired? Yes. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I had a phone thing here on Monday. Like I said, my anti Friday. And I've been at the hospital all day today. Okay. Do you have anything illegal on your map? No, ma'am. No, sir. Okay. Nope, I got my phone. No, I don't even have my phone. Okay. In Michigan, law enforcement officers generally have the authority to order a driver out of a vehicle during a traffic stop if they have reasonable suspicion or probable cause to believe the driver poses a threat is involved in criminal activity or if it's necessary for officer safety. However, the specific circumstances of each case can influence whether pulling a driver out of a vehicle is justified. Michigan State Police Lieutenant Mike Shaw once stated that there is no specific law requiring people to exit their vehicle during a traffic stop. The U.S. Supreme Court ruling in Pennsylvania v. Mimis found it reasonable for police to order people out of their car for officer safety during a lawful stop and based on reasonable suspicion or concerns for safety. Considering these legal aspects, the officers may not have had a strong enough reason to pull Miss Hughes out of her vehicle, especially since she wasn't under arrest at that point. Despite this, the officers continued their investigation and conducted a search, including checking Miss Hughes for weapons before securing her inside a patrol vehicle. It's a little chilly out here. Yeah, so I just ran down to pick them up. Didn't even think about my place at all. My mistake. Same thing, back of the hand works appropriate, okay? Yeah. It's going to be a little slick this way, so be careful and I'm going to hang on to you. We're going to go back this way and we'll have you sitting there. Yeah. Well, it's a misdemeanor offense. Oh, oh, I got you. Yeah, I really can't call. So that's... Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, my God. Okay, can I have my phone? No, you can't have it in the Oh, I can't call, I can't call somebody? I don't need to be bailed out of jail? Am I going to jail? We'll talk about that in a minute, okay? Well, I need to know so I can call my mom. Well, we haven't decided that yet, okay? Miss Hughes was placed in handcuffs, searched, and put in a patrol vehicle with an officer mentioning they were deciding whether to arrest her. This raised concerns of racial discrimination, possibly linked to her Black Lives Matter sweatshirt. The commanding officer then issued two citations against her, leaving her in the patrol vehicle for over 10 minutes without explanation. Alright, 
Melissa. You come on, step on out. I'll help you once you get far away. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna do your right hand first. When I do, just take it and put it on top of your head. Okay. Same thing with the left hand. All right, you can relax. Okay. Ooh. Still stuck. There we go. All right, so I got your driver's license and your registration back. So this is actually going to be two citations. So there's one that's a civil infraction mm -hmm. for the expired registration plate, and then there's the misdemeanor, which is for the expired license. You have 10 days to take care of each of them. I went ahead and circled the phone number there. Go ahead and call that on any business day. So if you want to call that Monday morning. After I've taken care of it or before? That, that's to take care of it. Oh. So call that number, and they'll tell you the terms and what you need to do to take care of it, OK? OK. All right. Did you have any other questions for me? Okay. And then still make sure you get those up to date, okay? Yep, I will. Fresh thing Monday morning. All right. Your uh, purse is on our hood. Make sure Miss Hughes received citations for the expired tag and license. However, the officer's actions of pulling her out of the vehicle, handcuffing her, and confining her raised concerns of racial discrimination. The Michigan Department of Civil Rights filed a discrimination charge, leading to a $45,000 settlement in July 2023. Ms. Hughes withdrew her complaint in exchange for the settlement, resulting in the dismissal of the case against the Grand Rapids Police Department. On August 12, 2018, Anthony Parker was driving his girlfriend's car with her and his son when Louisville Metro Police officers stopped him for allegedly not using a turn signal. Body camera footage contradicts this claim, showing he used the signal correctly. What's up, man? How much are y'all doing today? I'm just leaving church. Yeah. Awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm sorry because you didn't use a turn signal. He was already oh, over in the. I got, I got to do it like that for his bro. I got you. That's the reason why, man. That's the only reason, man. Awesome. Do what? Yeah, just because you're turning to me. Right? Oh, okay. Are there any weapons or drugs in the car or anything yeah, like that? I just left church, got my son with me, my baby in the car. So there's no guns in the car? No. Any knives? No. No, no, no narcotics like that? Awesome. Man, your hands are shaking like a leaf, brother. Even your faces. I just like people to be honest and straight up with me. I, do you have your driver's license? Yes, sir. My license is Okay, awesome. I paid the reinstatement. Yes, sir. Is it? Okay, awesome. I don't have no Damn sick. Yeah, okay. working now, but. Major, do me a favor, put your hands on the steering wheel for me. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, and before I have the exit vehicle, do you have any weapons on you? Any guns? Awesome, man. You are mainly concerned about that. Just left charge. Hey, I'm gonna get him out. I'm gonna get Dad out, and we're gonna go to the back, and then we we'll get you out here in a second, okay? All right, man. When you exit vehicle, keep your hands visible all the time. All right? Don't put your hands in your pockets in the front. I'm not, bro. Go next. Come close, right? Up, yeah, I'll get him. Okay. So nothing on you get in trouble, you might have a check real quick. Go ahead. Anything in the car gets in trouble? Man, nothing. Man, you might have a check, church, right? Man, Appreciate cool. it. Spread feet a little bit more for me. Spread feet. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. All right, sir, we're just going to come back to real. The officer falsely accused Mr. Parker of not using a turn signal, then searched him and requested consent to search the vehicle. Any evidence from these searches could be deemed inadmissible under the fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine as the alleged reason for the stop was fabricated. This doctrine excludes evidence obtained from illegal searches or seizures, even if consent was given during an illegal detention, as seen in previous legal cases like Florida v. Royer and U.S. v. Blair. Come on, let's step on out real quick. You got your ID on you? You just leave it there, leave it there, it's fine. It's okay. Step on out. Let's watch this here, Greg. Walk, walk on back here for me. I'm gonna pass you out real quick. You got anything on you? Just left the chart. Okay. Alright, spin around real quick for me. I'm gonna ride down your info real quick, okay? 
Who's the gentleman named Nick Harwood? Okay, alright. What's your last name? Furman. Last name is Furman? What's your uh, middle yes. Yes. birthday? Uh, uh, 1989. You're social? Okay. No, uh, we do. This is how we conduct all our stops. We're just a different type of unit that works a little bit different than a traditional. Another officer removed Miss Furman from the vehicle performed a pat-down without her consent, and questioned her. The Supreme Court's ruling in Pennsylvania v. Mimas, 1977, allows officers to order both drivers and passengers out of a vehicle for officer safety during a lawful traffic stop, even without specific concerns for safety. However, the Supreme Court's decision in Arizona v. Johnson, 2009, clarified that officers must have reasonable suspicion that the person being frisked is armed and dangerous to justify a pat-down during a traffic stop. The Sixth Circuit has applied this precedent, emphasizing that officers must reasonably believe the individual is armed and dangerous based on specific facts. In the case of United States v. Johnson, 2021, the court highlighted that a lawful stop doesn't automatically authorize a pat-down search unless there's reasonable suspicion of criminal activity and a reasonable belief that the individual is armed and dangerous. In this situation, given the lack of a valid basis for the traffic stop and no articulable evidence suggesting Miss Furman was armed and dangerous, the officer's pat-down frisk on her would not be constitutionally justifiable, even if the stop itself was lawful. Everybody clear? Yeah. Double push my There's hazard, a, like, a lot of the Monte Carlo's like yeah, that. Yeah, I got a really? double push the hazard. Like sometimes it'll work. You know, you hit the hit it like normal. But then sometimes I got double push the hazard for the clip to even come in. So that's okay. probably what happened. Like I didn't even know I didn't. Use, I, you know, I used it, but I didn't know it didn't come on. Okay. You're good. Yeah. Sweet. All right, man. I'm not gonna harp on the OL and not like that. Appreciate it. No problem, man. You guys are good to go. After finding nothing illegal during the vehicle search, the officers allowed Mr. Parker, Miss Furman, and Mr. Parker's son to leave without issuing a citation. On August 7, 2019, Mr. Parker and Miss Furman filed a federal lawsuit against the officers, the chief of the Louisville Metro Police Department, and the head of the 9th Mobile Division. Their attorneys, who also represented Brianna Taylor's family, alleged that the 9th Mobile Division regularly engaged in deceptive and unconstitutional practices during traffic stops. The complaint detailed tactics like intimidation, trickery to obtain consent for searches, and quick double negatives to confuse occupants into consenting. The city agreed to a $75,000 settlement on September 9, 2021, which allowed the Metro government to deny wrongdoing and barred Mr. Parker, Ms. Furman, and their lawyers from criticizing the Louisville Metro government or the involved officers. On May 13, 2022, the Battle Creek Police Department received a call that a man was walking around the street for no apparent reason and taking photographs. The police officers who went to the scene were recorded by the camera of the person we will identify as Mr. Audit. Okay, case okay, your name and badge number? Matthews. 1163. 1163. Yep. Cool. Can I get your information, please? Am I suspected of committing a crime? I got a call. Okay. About a suspicious person. Okay. Who is walking up and down the road, approaching houses. Okay. I am investigating a potential crime. Okay. Are you going to give me your information so that I can investigate? You suspect me of committing a crime, but I can just tell you that I was on the sidewalk. I was okay. taking pictures of this house for a reason that the owner knows. And that's it. Okay. Do you have your ID on you? I'm not going to provide you with ID unless I've committed a crime. I am investigating a potential crime. Okay. People what crime are, are you investigating? In saying that you are taking pictures of more than one house. Okay. Okay. It is my job to make sure that you are not casing any houses. Okay. All right. What crime do you suspect me of committing? I have 
already explained that to you, sir. Are Can you, you articulate a crime? Me with information that I'm requesting or not? No. Are you going to articulate a crime? I've already explained that to you multiple so times. Yep. Okay. So you suspect me of being suspicious. In the U.S., police can't make arrests solely on a tip. They need probable cause, which means having a reasonable belief a crime happened and the suspect is involved. Tips can spark investigations, but the police typically need to find other evidence, like witnessing suspicious activity, to support the tip before pressing charges. In this case, even when the police had access to terminate their reasonable suspicion, which meant talking to the landlord, they chose not to do so and continued to press Mr. Audit with questions he did not want to answer. Now there was a call mm -hmm. of you taking pictures and approaching houses. It was not. Okay. Well, that's the call. You've asked me to explain myself, and okay. I'm explaining myself, and I'm explaining why we're investigating. Okay. okay. I'm explaining why you are required to give me your information. You're not required to give you identification unless you can reasonably articulate a crime that I have committed. This is not a stop and ID state. I have already explained that to you. Are you willing to give me your information? No. Okay, so you're obstructing an investigation. I'm not obstructing. Obstructing is a secondary crime that I have to have been committed. I have to be convicted for? of committing a crime in order to be obstructing. What part of this is, you, are you failing to understand? Is I'm not failing to understand anything. I think you're failing to understand. I'm, I'm not. Okay. Okay. I'm here for a legitimate reason. And I'm trying to obtain your information okay. so I can verify that you're here for a legal purpose. Okay. Okay. I am here for a legal purpose. Okay. And what purpose is that? I am doing an inspection on a house. Okay. And who do you work for? Why is that important? So that I can call and verify that you are here and that you are an employee. Okay. So you want to, you want my information to verify that I am here for a legitimate reason. Why would not, why wouldn't you ask the homeowner who's standing behind me? And I, I can. Okay. That's part of my investigation. But right now, you're not cooperating with that. I don't feel that I'm not. Co I we feel that I am been, cooperating. We could have already been done and gone with, okay. with this. Okay. Okay. So I'm failing to understand why this is becoming such a process. Because it's my rights. Like, I'm standing up for my rights. So my right, my Fourth Amendment right, says that you cannot seize my identity unless I have been... Can, I'm, suspected of committing a crime you have yet to articulate with reasonable suspicion a crime that i have committed i have dispelled i believe i have dispelled any evidence of me committing a crime by telling you that i'm here i am inspecting a house okay so and what I'm crime have i committed or do you suspect me of committing can i speak go right ahead okay as I've explained multiple times, we got a call that said that you were taking pictures and approaching multiple houses. That you are currently at this house, okay? Yep. Entering onto other people's properties. Not a true statement. Okay. And I don't know that okay. because I have somebody who's saying that that happened. Okay. People lie to us all the time. Yes. Okay. It's my job to investigate yep. and identify people who could be potentially committing crimes in yep. the neighborhood which in this case is the concern. Okay. All right. I need your identification. No, you don't. So that I can verify. Okay. The right to refuse ID to police depends on the situation. Many states allow ID requests during lawful stops, but refusal might lead to detention, not charges for refusing ID itself. Supreme Court cases like Terry v. Ohio permit ID requests during brief detentions based on reasonable suspicion, but a full arrest needs probable cause. You can politely ask if you're free to leave and inquire about the reason for a stop. While police can investigate without your ID, it can help them connect you to the crime or eliminate you as a suspect. Also, the Fifth Amendment protects against self-blame, essentially allowing you to avoid saying things that can be used against you. This can be indirectly linked to self-blame because it allows you to avoid taking responsibility verbally even if you feel it emotionally. In this case, it was not right for Mr. Audit to prolong his conversation with the police because every second he kept talking, he was giving them more leverage. So I would suggest, I would suggest that you talk to the I complainant. This wrong? Can I request supervisor? 
I'm requesting a supervisor. I'm okay. formally requesting a supervisor, Officer Matthews. Okay. And I'm formally requesting your information. Not to mention... Is that a lawful order? Yes, it is. No, it's not. Okay. You're, you're attempting to use the color of law, which would be violating my rights. I'm not violating your Fourth Amendment rights. Yes, you are. You're attempting to. You have not done it yet, but you're attempting to. What's your name and badge number, please? Right is that how you answer the judge? This is right here. That's how you answer the judge? You just point at your... Right here. Yeah. You, so Hickman and your badge number is... 44. 44. Right Thank you. The other concern is that if you are going house to house, which is the call that we got, is that you have to have a license in order to do that. So have you filed a license with the city of Battle Creek? So that is if I am pedaling or panhandling, which, which is, I am doing neither of which. Which is also what we're trying to identify, right? Okay. Which is also a crime. Okay. So I do have a legal right to obtain your identification, as I've explained on multiple occasions. So I am not pedaling. Sir, have I solicited you for anything? Because I'm expressing my rights, I'm exercising my rights. You're That's why it's a problem. I am. You're not. I've explained the legal right that I have to obtain that information. No. And you are the, the obstructing that investigation. Secondary crime. And not allowing me to. So cite me a, give me a statute that tells me that you suspect me of committing a crime. Cite the statute. Yes, you have to cite a statute. You have to, to supply me with reasonable, articulated suspicion of a crime. What is the crime that you suspect me of committing? I've, I've explained that multiple times. Sir? I don't know how else to explain that to you. Can I talk to you for a second? Come in there and talk to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I request the incident number? Officer Matthews, are you not gonna provide me with the incident number when I requested it? Or the supervisor when I requested the supervisor? If you wanna talk to somebody, you can call, okay? Okay, who's I'm your- I'm not gonna provide you with your information. I'm not gonna provide you with an incident number because I don't know who you are. What's your sergeant's name? Sergeant Henley. Sergeant Henley, okay, perfect, thank you. I'll be filing up with a formal complaint. At the end of the video, the police asked the landlord a few simple questions to prove that Mr. Audit was indeed telling the truth, which they should have done at the very beginning. He said he would file a formal complaint about the incident, but it remains unclear whether he did so. On August 30th, 2022, First Amendment auditor Drew Rybar tried filming at the Northern Nevada Correctional Center in Carson City, Nevada. This is a medium security facility. Mr. Rybar said he was auditing publicly accessible areas of the prison. He planned to film the visitor parking lot and anything else visible from outside. While filming on a road leading to the facility, which is considered correctional center property, Lieutenant Aaron Ryer of the Nevada Department of Corrections approached him. Hi there. Hello, sir. What's your what name? For you? what, what's your name? Lieutenant Ryer. What can we do for you? I'm just taking pictures and filming. Okay. Could you do it off the property, please? Um, is this a public roadway? No, this is not a public roadway. Where, where does it say this there's... This belongs to the prison, sir. I need you to film yeah, off the property. Where, where does it say no trespassing? Sir, I'm asking you to please film off the property. Otherwise, I'll have Carson S.O. come tell you to get off the property. Well, well, can you show me where it says no trespassing? No, sir, is... I'm not showing you anything. I'm telling you you need okay. to leave the property. Well, well then, if, if there's no... I'm a sworn no... peace officer for the state of Nevada, uh, I, I, I appreciate it's that. It's not an unlawful order, so could I please okay. get you to go so, off the property? If it's not an yes, unlawful... Sir, no, sir. It's not an unlawful. Sir, yes or no, so I can call Carson S.O. Well, let me ask some okay. questions. You're not. You're saying yeah, I don't get to ask I questions. I will call Carson S.O. and let them know. Okay. Thank you. T tell them that I'm exercising my constitutional rights. Okay, here we go. So we've already been stopped. 
and and we're gonna go look for a no trespassing sign we're gonna wait to go across the street here okay no no trespassing signs anywhere that I can visibly see here Lieutenant Ryer couldn't find any no trespassing signs, but Nevada's trespassing law applies on both public and private property. Even without signs, a verbal warning is enough. So Mr. Rybar could be trespassing if he refused to leave after being asked. Government property like the Correctional Center isn't always open to the public. Visitors need approval, and media visits require pre-arranging and getting permission to film. Mr. Rybar, likely considered media, would need a written request two weeks before filming. And we'll just kind of keep going over here now. These guys are surrounding my truck. They're preventing my path of movement down a public road. Yes, sir. And, and what was your name again? Lieutenant Ryer, I already told you, sir. And, and do you have a badge number? Closing the window. Yes, sir. And what's your badge number? 10,300. 10,300, okay. Um, so just to let you know what I'm involved in. Sir, I'm not worried about what you're involved in. You're on our property, I need you to leave. Um, I'm not, where, I have nothing where, else to say. Uh, the again, is all rising. again where, where are the, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna say it real loud with your rolled up window. So I'd, I'd like you to read four dice versus Seattle, that's case law. Sir, I'm worried. Hang on, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm telling you that right now under NRS 197-200, you're oppressing my rights under the color of law. So your qualified immunity may not exist. I'm exercising my constitutional right to film in public. The most recent court, the 10th Circuit in July 22nd in Izari versus Yahia. So that's your case law for what I'm doing. You have a nice day. Mr. Rybar cited legal precedents that support the right to film in public places under the First Amendment. These cases establish that filming in public is generally allowed, but can be restricted in certain places, like government-owned property. Factors such as how accessible an area is to the public and its historical use determine if it's considered a public forum. For example, if an area is regularly used by the public and has no clear restrictions on access, it's more likely to be a public forum where filming is allowed. However, if the area is restricted or used for specific purposes, like a prison or government facility, filming may be restricted or prohibited. This aligns with past court decisions that have upheld restrictions on filming in certain locations, such as jails or private property, to maintain security and order. No parking, no use of tobacco. Well, we can see my feet how close I am to the road here. So I should be on the public easement. That was pretty fast response just for looking at their sign on the road. I am good, how are you? What, what's your name and your badge number? I'm Sergeant Smith. Sergeant Smith? Yes, sir. And your number? I don't have a badge number. I have an employee ID number, what, 38095. What? Can I ask what you're, uh, what you're doing out here? I'm exercising my constitutional right to film in public and okay. to disseminate the information as a member of the press. Okay, I can only let you go so far, sir. You can't come on the state's property. We're not allowing well, you on there. You're also not wearing the right colors for that. If you wear a blue shirt, we can mistake you for an inmate. Well, um, let me ask a question here. The state owns this road? I believe they do, yes. Okay, Is there are there any no trespassing signs from... I don't know, did you see any on your way in, sir? I documented everything and there are no no trespassing signs that I can find. Is this a publicly funded road open to the public? And if I'm a visitor, can I come down this road are you and park? Are you here to visit an inmate? I'm here to do my business. Okay. Well, I will, I will let you know, sir, that we have called the Sheriff's Department. Okay. And they, they will be on their way. Okay. Okay. So, do you want to interfere with me accessing a public roadway? You can access a public roadway if you believe this is a public roadway. By all means, I'm refusing to let you on the state's property. Oh, I, I, I don't want on the state's property. Anywhere that the public can go here, I should be able to go, right? 100%. But other than that, I'd like to continue down the public roadway to any public parking to where visitors may park and see what they go through to come and see their friends and family that may be incarcerated inside. Is that illegal? You're, you're standing in my way, impeding my path. There's there's many ways you can walk Well, I, I, I'm around. trying to purposely stay close to the roadway. So if I keep walking, are you gonna interfere with me? I'm not gonna interfere with you. Okay, thank you. There's the warden's car. Yes, sir. 
I'm just taking pictures. No, sir, you cannot do this. I'm the warden of this complex. Oh, good. I, what, what's your name, sir? Hey, hang on, let me, get, let me get closer so I can hear you, sir. Let, let me get closer so I can hear you. Can I get closer so I can hear you? Can I get closer so I can hear you? No, sir. Oh, I can't get closer so I can hear you. I'm going to ask you to remove yourself from the property. Okay, is this... Trespassing on state property. Is this... You're not, you're an, you are in an unauthorized position, uh, property. Sir, okay. can, can, I, can I, need I, you to, I need you to remove yourself from the premises, sir. Can, can I, and sir, what's, what's your name, sir? Sir, I need you to remove yourself sir, from the what's, premises. Sir, what's your name, sir? Yeah, we call the loan lock boy. Yeah, he's right here. <clears throat> and sir, this gentleman is trespassing on the property. Sir, can you identify yourself? I'm the warden of the company. And what's your name? So I'm asking him to be removed as a trespasser. Sir, sir, what is your name? You've engaged with me, sir. What is your name? He came onto the property without permission. Sir, what is your name? Yes, it is. This is disrupting operations. This is disrupting operations. Okay. Sir, sir, what is your name? Okay. Put that down. Put your hands yes, behind your back. Okay. He is on the I'm not going to risk these guys at all. Deputy Bueno plans to charge Mr. Rybar with trespassing, obstructing, and failure to identify under Nevada revised statutes. The obstruction charge is based on Mr. Rybar's refusal to leave Correctional Center property, citing a similar case precedent. The failure to identify charge relates to Nevada law requiring individuals detained by officers to identify themselves, though Mr. Rybar did comply with this requirement. Okay, can I buy you more things? No, you may not. Right now you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and may be used against you in a court. NRS 1 you have a, Excuse me, I didn't interrupt you, did I? NRS okay, if you don't want to hear your rights, then we're not going to talk about it. Okay. Um, I'm not going to ask you any questions. Step over to my vehicle. Okay. So I'm Thank you, You're in custody at this point. And what am I being arrested for? You're being arrested for trespassing. Okay, so where was the uh, no trespassing sign? Well, I'll explain everything to you, but right now you're not under Miranda, so I'm not going to ask you any questions. I'm just asking you questions. Please. Well, you don't have a right to ask me questions at this point. You have a right to get in the car. Hop on in there. So so whatever we need, we need some statements. I'll be happy to. So that way we have someone from from the state here, you know, that's going to press. Yeah, and, no problem. And then um, we're going to have to probably yeah. tow his truck, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's probably one of those advocacy groups. I'm sure he is, the, and, and I'm, I don't really care about his agenda. I just care about that it obviously he's disrupting the full business here. So if, if anybody had contact with him that gave him that, um, that trespass verbally and he, and he refused, I'll need that kind of in your guys' statements. We're going to do statements of the effect of the trespassing. This is a, it's a prison, it's a controlled area. All visitors are required to check in. He didn't do any of that. He refused to leave. They're on lockdown. Do you want to go obstructing? I mean, these, they're cops. Yeah. Did, did anybody ask him ID at all on the property? Not to my knowledge, because okay. I just asked him what, what was his name. He refused to acknowledge me. Okay. Uh, to give me why was he, what was his name, purpose up here. Okay. So, so we can do failure to identify too? Yeah. And then do you guys, did you guys ask him for his name at all? I did not ask him for his name. I just tried to see why he was here and tried to direct him off the property to okay. building 17 over there, right down the road to get some information. Okay. So those three. Any questions? Um, sir, you have my card. Just um, let me know. All right. Thank you. Okay, so you do have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and may be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to talk to an attorney and have an attorney present with you if you wish. You can choose at any time not to make any statements or answer any questions. Do you understand those rights? I'm bringing one in just so you know. All right, sir, step on out, please. Okay. Face the car right here. Make a left. Have a seat in that blue chair. Got a little sweaty back there. A little bit. Did the air run in? No. It I wasn't? Think, I think you're trying to hotbox me. I had the air back there going. Ah, uh, well, you rolled up the window that left a breeze. What's that? Yeah, you rolled up the window that left a breeze. So, like I said, yeah, I, I, I think you were just trying to hotbox me. So. You, you really do need to go read the Tenth Circuit Court, July no, 22nd opinion. No, I'm not going into any court today. I'm looking at you for a misdemeanor charge. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I, I understand. Do. But you arrested me for filming in public. No, I did not. Well, Trespassing and obstructing. How did I obstruct? 
Hey, I'm not going to get into it. I'm I, sure I just, that you have a big plan and idea no, of the I, I don't, in your mind. I, I don't you can really. let that play out. You refuse to identify yourself. You're required to give your name. I refuse to identify myself. That's okay. nobody ever asked me to identify. Okay, well, when I ask the warden listen, to identify. I'm, I'm going to just tell you something. I'm my, not going to argue with you. I'm not trying to argue. I'm trying you to answer the question. You can do this in court questions. later on. I don't care what you have to say right I'm now about to get that. Answers to questions. According to Mr. Rybar, the criminal case against him was dismissed on December 20th, 2023 as part of a plea bargain where he pleaded no contest in exchange for a later dismissal. Court records are not publicly available to confirm the status of any charges filed against him. On January 29, 2024, Mr. Rybar filed a pro C lawsuit in state court, later removed to federal court. The complaint alleges multiple constitutional and state law violations, including reckless driving, false imprisonment, unlawful taking of a vehicle, grand larceny, and malicious prosecution. As of the date of writing, the case is still pending.